In the last video, I told you you could go to this website and click this button and it would download the code. Now there could be a several problems with that. First of all, there's going to be a lot of extraneous code. Second, there could be a lot of people that may not want to download a zip folder and extract it all. So instead, let's right click and go to view source because everything will be, except for this jQuery link, will be in this code. So you can copy this code right here and as long as you're linked to your jQuery file, everything will be good to go. So for example, this is what I have on my hard drive. And in my text editor, this is the code. So what I'm going to do is replace this code with what I can get off my website. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to select everything, control A, then I'm going to go to the text editor and replace everything, control A, and then control V. Now I'm going to go back and look at what I have on the hard drive. I'm going to refresh everything and you see everything still works just the way I have it because it's the same code. So what I have on my website where you can go and view source, all you have to do is copy the view source and paste it and make sure you're linked to the jQuery file. By doing it this way, we can all be on the same page when we begin. So let's go to the code editor and look at this code. So at the space at the top, we're going to put some PHP in there later. Now notice that we have all these styles inside this style tag. You would probably want to externalize those. I put those in there for now so that they're easily, you, that way you can right click and copy it. As I'm developing this application and screencasting it, I'm just going to leave all my styles embedded. If I change that later, I'll put that in my screencast. So also, let's look at some of these buttons and forms. From this point on, any changes that I make, I will put in my screencast so that we will all be on the same page. And feel free to make any changes, especially in the style that you want. Just make sure it works. So now let's go and look at this. Notice this button here, ID filter underscore BT. Let me show you what happens when we click that button. So I'm going to go to the page and click. So the filter button toggles open one form. The add button toggles open a form. And the edit button toggles open a form. Now let's go back to the code and take a look at these buttons and forms that we're toggling open. So notice that these other buttons are named create underscore BT and update underscore BT. And remember the filter button was named filter underscore BT. So now let's look at the forms. We have this one form and it's called filter underscore F. So we have filter underscore BT for our button and filter underscore F for our form. And then we have this other form called create underscore F. So we have create underscore BT and create underscore F. And then we have this other form called update underscore F. So we have update underscore BT and update underscore F. So now let's go and look at this function that we have. Now down at the bottom in the script tag we have this right here. So when we click on any of the buttons with a class of button we declare a variable and it's going to be equal to the ID attribute of this, that is the button we are clicking on, then we're going to console.log that variable which we call form. And then we're going to declare another variable, same variable form, but we're going to take that earlier variable and get a substring from 0 to form.length minus 3. In other words, we're going to strip off the last three characters. Do you remember the button had underscore BT? 
and then we're going to console.log form again after it had the string manipulation. Now the next line of code, what we're going to do is we're going to inside the parentheses, we're going to do some string concatenation. Do you remember our forms had an underscore F? So we're going to get the ID of, then we're going to take the variable, which is either create, update, or filter. We're going to add to it an underscore F. That's going to toggle our forms. We're going to do it fast. So let's go ahead and look at what happens when we click the buttons. Okay, so I'm going to click the filter button and the filter form pops up. Click the add button. I'm going to click the add button again to, show, to shut it down and I'm going to click the add bu edit button. Now remember, I clicked the add button twice. Okay, so now let's go to the console and look at what happened. So I clicked the filter button and I got filter underscore BT and filter create underscore BT create create under because I clicked the add button twice and then update underscore BT and update. So back to the code. That's how this line of code works. It gets the ID of the whatever form we get adds to the underscore F and we toggle that form. So now let's look at some of these two other functions we have in here. We have a key up and these functions are all wrapped in a doc ready function. So anyway, look at this. We got the document dot key up function E. And then in the parentheses, we have if E dot key equals escape with quotation marks, then we run this function location dot reload. That just refreshes the page. Also, when we click the reload button, we also reload the page. So that's the only JavaScript we are starting out with. jQuery, remember, you have to be linked to the jQuery library. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these console.logs off. And I do want to do some PHP. So at the top of the file, right here in this blank spot, I'm going to create a PHP tag. And I'm going to run this inside the tag. I'm going to write this function now, ob underscore start. We'll talk about what this means later. So from now on, anything I type in the code, you will have to type yourself. So I also want to include a file. So what we are going to do is include in parentheses and in quotation marks, we have to go to the underscore include. That's a folder. And we're going to include the connect.php. Now this connect.php is going to connect us to a database that we are going to build. So in the next video, we're going to start working in PHP MyAdmin and we're going to connect to a database with a connect.php. Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. I hope you get your files right and that you're being able to follow along and that you will watch the next video. Also, please share this video because the more people who are enjoying this video or learning something from it, the more inspired I am to continue to make videos. And also, subscribe and, and like the video. This is going to inspire me to continue to make these videos. And if you don't like these videos, let me know. Say something in the comments, saying something what you don't like about it, and maybe I can try to fix that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.